What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. On this episode, we're back on our Chevelle build for SEMA this year. We have a lot of goodies that came in from Vibrant Performance. A full pallet, 180 pounds to be exact. And I think Mikey and Colel are digging into that box right now, getting it unloaded from the truck. So as you can see, we have everything that we possibly could need. We have our exhaust, we have our intercooler core. We also have some titanium here because we're going to be doing titanium on the cold side of the turbo system. We have plenty of HD clamps for the actual charge piping. One thing I did not realize that Vibrant had was actual packages. So this is an oil drain kit for your GT turbos. We're gonna have all the drains, all the fittings, everything, it's all just nice and packaged. It even comes with the drain line. We also have our header flanges, so we can get our headers done. We have all the exhaust as well for the Chevelle. We're gonna do in full stainless steel all the way back. We're not going titanium on the exhaust only because it's going to change the sound a little bit more in like the exhaust exotic side and we want this thing to be more of like a muscle car so we're gonna be sticking with stainless steel the so first thing we're gonna do is throw the turbos in and we're gonna start unboxing all these nice parts we have getting ideas to how we're gonna start laying things out so that we can start making some headers we're gonna get this d-shaft in make sure our universal joints are all lined up I don't have the exact ones I need but some tape is gonna be able to help us out in this department so I'm gonna get that in first figure out what my clearance issues are and then start running this three inch downpipe across here and I'm gonna run it down and probably stop right next to the transmission. We started to make our way to the driver's side. I really like the way this is flowing around on top of that strut tower. But right now I'm gonna stop it there and I'm gonna go over to the passenger side and I'm gonna mimic what I have. Always use your bubble level, guys. That's like your best friend when you're doing stuff like this. That's how you get your symmetry, get everything looking nice. I need to situate the radiator in the engine bay before I go ahead and start doing the headers because the actual exhaust side on the turbos are facing the direction of where the radiator is gonna go. So in order for me to know like where I can go here, I really wanna get that radiator situated. There's a big cavity here, it makes it look like you have a lot of room, but you know, you throw the radiator and the intercooler in there and you'll start seeing things differently. Before I throw this intercooler core into the front of the Chevelle, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position my four inch HD and two and a half. Our actual boost charge air coming in from underneath is gonna be a two and a half inch diameter. Then once the air goes through the core, it gets transferred to actual dent side, that's gonna go to the throttle body. Then we're gonna bump it up to four inch. So as the velocity of the air goes through, it expands, you need a larger diameter in order to feed your engines. Our core is in there, but the issues are going to a four inch to a four inch with the turbo here, it's all gonna be binding up. In the Japanese world, there's a thing called a V-mount setup where the radiator is actually laid back on like a 45 degree angle and the intercooler's on top. I'm gonna lay the radiator back about that far. The Clico's hold me off the pulley about as much as I would wanna be. We're gonna do two individual intercooler cores. This four inch pipe is gonna kinda jog up and over the radiator and then go into the top of the intercooler. We went ahead and mocked up a fake intercooler core out of some 16 gauge steel so we can keep the train rolling. So I got the radiator tilted back pretty much as far as it can go. Obviously it's hitting the pulley. I'm gonna weld up some titanium right now and see where I need to be in order to clear this over without it hitting the pulley. When you're messing with titanium, I can't stress this enough, all the grease and oil from your fingertips will melt into the titanium and when you go to weld it, you'll have fingerprints everywhere. So just make sure you wear gloves when you're messing with this stuff. All right, so we got the hood back on and we got some really good clearance. I think the intake manifold is gonna work really well. Next step is getting the intercooler situated and get everything kind of fit up where we all need it and everything. Oh, excuse me, sir. What's up, dude? Hey, JC's in the house. What's up, man? How are you? Came to check out the project and see where you guys are at. What do you think? It definitely needs some billet. I think we could spruce up those valve covers. We'll make this all nice and smooth and then really cool logo here. We're gonna tap, pass the torch over to JC because he's all grown up now. He's a big boy. <laughs> He's got his own YouTube channel. Yes, sir. So make sure you guys check me out at JC Custom CNC on YouTube. See how these valve covers go from a solid block of billet aluminum. We'll use 6061 on this. He'll explain what that is too over on his <laughs> channel because I have no idea. He's got really cool projects going on, guys. 
a lot of really cool CNC stuff. He's gonna teach you how to use CNC machines, teach you how to make your own valve covers if you have a CNC machine. So go ahead and check him out. I'm gonna put a link in the description below so you can see how these valve covers are made. Thank you, sir. Appreciate I can't you, wait man. to see him. Yeah, man, it's gonna be awesome. I went ahead and used these two inch two by four pieces to space the intercooler core away from the radiator because we still have to put a condenser in there for the air conditioning. So the next step I want to do is I want to try to get the rest of this intercooler piping kind of tacked in place so I can shut the hood down, make sure it clears, and then I'm really good to go. We have our cold side done on the top here. Now our final little approval to see if this thing's gonna work is if it clears the hood. Ideally, it's gonna sit inside of this cavity right here so that we're not gonna get any obstructions. So let's go ahead and shut that hood. Uh, oh yeah, we got plenty of room. We're gonna be fine with that. The only issue that I noticed was I initially wanted the throttle bodies to be facing into each other, but this throttle body is up while this one is down. There's like a, a difference as far as the height of the throttle body in relation to where it bolts on. So I'm gonna have to unbolt this and flip it around and figure out what we're gonna do about these electric motors later. We got good symmetry on our charge pipes. We're gonna have blow up valves coming out of the end sides of these guys right here. So that space will get filled up. I know all this is gonna fit now under the hood. So I can shift my attention to actually getting some real mounts on this radiator. So I found some bungs from an old project that we're going to use to actually mount the radiator to our side plates. These are a little long though, so I'm going to cut them down in half. When you're doing bungs like this guys and you're welding them to the side of end tanks to stop you from possibly putting a bolt in there too long and puncturing the tank, make sure your bung has an actual back on it. Uh, Cal's breaking down the front end of the car right now so we can get to the core support. Once the grill is out of the way, front bumper, this guy, then we'll start making our closeouts for inside of here to be able to make this even and we'll have a better idea as to where the radiator is sitting. All right, so one side of our closeout is all set. As you can see, we just hammer and dyed this radius up here. Not a huge deal. I was only gonna do the passenger side and not the driver's side, but I'm liking where this is falling on the actual bead weld of the radiator core. This is creating a nice box for the core itself to be able to funnel the air through here and get it exactly where we want it. So I'm gonna do the same on this side. I'm gonna come out probably three inches so that we are nice and square with the actual weld. All right, so we have our sides in. You can start seeing the box taking shape. We're gonna start situating our bungs now. So we have our little radiator tabs cut. Just put it all together. You know, this is this is what you want it all to look like when it's done, so. The only thing you have to do is just put it in place, weld the steel part and weld the aluminum part and you're good to go. This side's easy. We have a big enough core to be able to just put it just like that. And I'll probably put it down low, about, about right there for the first one. This side I'm just gonna use a piece of angle and I'm gonna put the angle on the actual outside of the end tank here. This surface here will be welded on the end tank and then we'll weld this bung to this surface here. Tabs all welded up on our radiator on the uh, driver and passenger side. 
turned on nice. Now we got our steel tap back in, bolts it in place. So now we're gonna be able to weld this in. Before I weld that though, guys, I wanna do some bead rolling on these panels. It's gonna give it some extra strength. Radiator is now installed. Top bracket is finally out of the way. Side plates are bolted in. And I also cut back some more material on the sides here. So now this is completely open. And we have the full width of the radiator inside of our box. Now, before we put our intercoolers in, I have to put in the AC condenser core. So I get the thickness of bringing out the intercooler. All right, so we got our condenser all welded in place. Right now it's just held in with these Clecos, but I'm really happy with how this is gonna be uh, situated, nice and low. So we're gonna be able to get our AC lines, the high and the low side, out the bottom of the actual turbo system. So we're gonna try to keep all the lines real low, all the wiring low. So all you see up here is all just nice turbo goodness. Now that we have this in place, we can go ahead and get our intercooler in. Vibrant went ahead and sent us over this new core. So let's get this thing out of the box. It's really big. This is really perfect for what we need. Um, originally, I was gonna actually split this thing in two, but I might just leave it all in one and just make my end tanks. The only issue with it is, well, UPS did a little modification to the intercooler. So this one's gonna be mock-up piece. First thing I wanna do though is I'm gonna put some hardware in our AC condenser so these Clecos can get out of the way. Got that big boy in there that is a huge intercooler core but you know what this thing's gonna make some pretty good big power so you want an ample amount of cooling especially with a turbo system got our intercooler in our radiators mounted got our end plates made really happy with how these came out next episode guys we're gonna be making some end tanks for our intercooler setup getting the top half situated we're gonna have to move some stuff around to get our hd clamps to fit and then we're also going to do some end tanks on the lower half as well and then we'll be moving on to some turbo work so thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, we'll see you guys next time. Next week, we're making custom intercoolers for our Chevelle from scratch, handmade, like your grandma used to do it. Yeah, we're gonna make this, that's already here and already made from Vibrant, we're gonna make that. Tomato potato. Tomato potato.